no clickbait. Here is the code in all its 100 character glory. Um, but I'm going to be upfront about the gameplay, or the lack thereof. Take a look. So as you can see, maybe I was being a bit ambitious when I set out to make a Flappy Bird type game, but then again, this project is all about compromising, seeing how much gameplay you can get out of barely any code. This video is basically going to be a rundown of the five versions of this game, moving from 138 characters of code to the final 100. I made all of this in Game Maker and I've used some really interesting tricks to make it work, so stick around. The only restrictions I imposed on myself were that the player had to be able to move up and down, an obstacle had to move towards them and wrap around the screen, and the code had to be as small as possible. So getting straight into my initial version, I have to give some credit to Terra Hunula, who tweeted about a way to recreate the functionality of variables in the draw event. The problem with just using variables is that the draw event updates every frame, but I only wanted to initialize our variables once. The way it was proposed to get around this was to use struct accessors with the current instance. Now I don't know if this is an intended use case of this feature, but I'm basically pretending that the current instance is a struct and then I'm referencing a variable inside it. This makes it so that when the game realizes the variable wasn't initialized anywhere, it would just return undefined instead of throwing an error as it would if I'd just tried to reference a normal variable. Then I can use a nullish operator, which will set the value of an undefined variable. This means that the variable is only going to get set to that value once, because after that, the nullish operator will see that the variable isn't undefined. So this has all just been a roundabout way of making variables in an event that updates every frame. I'm going to use this method three times to make a height variable, a position variable, and a width variable. These variable names don't really make sense, but when there's only three, and they're only one character long to save space, it doesn't really matter. I would have liked to use y for height and x for width, but for some reason I assumed I should avoid using instance variables. You'll see later this is really not the case. Now that h is initialized, I'll check if the up arrow is pressed, and if it is, we'll move it up by 2 pixels every frame. Then we check if w is less than 0, so that if the obstacle is off the left side of the screen, I'll reset its position to 128, which is the room width. And also, I'll set its position to the same as the current height. This makes it so that every time the obstacle loops around the screen, it's at the same height as the player, forcing them to move. Now I'm using draw underscore text to visually represent the player and the obstacle. I was originally going to use draw underscore circle, but it's quite inefficient because you have to pass in a radius and whether it's an outline or not. With text, you only have to pass in the character to draw, and I'm basically exploiting GameMaker's default font to draw something of a reasonable size without passing any size value anywhere. In the first draw function, I'm drawing at the horizontal position 9, which is a bit further to the left than I would have wanted, but any more would have had to use an extra character. The vertical position is h++, which is the h variable, but one is added. This moves the h position down one every frame, without having to have a separate line for h++. This is also the reason that the keyboard underscore check function needs to be multiplied by 2, because the player is falling one pixel every frame. If we only moved up one pixel, the two would cancel each other out. And finally, because I wanted the obstacle to move faster, I've added w minus equals 2 to the end to move it 2 pixels per frame to the left. So here's the result of the first version. You can see it's not super fancy, but the use of text is working pretty well and the movement works fine. Moving on to the second version, my two main innovations are compromising on the speed of the obstacle and just reusing the variable minus minus method for the w variable. And I've also replaced the keyboard underscore check function with keyboard underscore key equals vk underscore up. Version 2 is also where I threw all of the game maker rules completely out the window and deleted every single semicolon. This is really terrible coding form, but necessary to get that character count down. These changes shave a total of 16 characters off the limit. Now version 3 is where things get a little bit more interesting, because it's where I took three passes to refine the player's vertical movement code. So my initial attempt looked like this. This was pretty good, because instead of checking for keyboard key equals vk up, I cut it down to doesn't equal zero, which means that any key being pressed down would trigger it. The problem is, I've still got the two times and the brackets. This is where I remember that GameMaker has conditional operators. Basically, this is where you can write an if else statement with just a question mark and a colon. So what I'm basically saying is, if keyboard key, then h minus equals one, else h minus equals minus one. Now that the keyboard being pressed controls upwards and downwards movement, I don't need to do H++ anywhere, and I'm saving 7 characters overall with this revision. Version 4, however, is where I finally went too far. The big problem I faced was that initialising all the variables was still taking up far too many characters. 
If I was to break 100 characters, I'd need to get rid of at least one of the variables. This was when I finally realized there was no point using any variables when I can just use pre-made instance and local variables. So I replace H with Y, I replace W with X, and replace P with score. I use score because it's a local variable with the lowest character count. Another funny thing I worked out in this version is that, whereas previously I had to include a space between if and the expression, I realized you could just put them on separate lines and that would tell it that they weren't connected without using a character on a space. Another aspect I compromised on to save four characters was replacing the text strings with just numbers because I didn't want to include speech marks. Now was it a shame to get rid of my use of struct accessors? Yeah. Did I smash my goal and cut down my code to just 77 characters? Also yes. Still, I wanted to do better. And do better I did with version 5 where with just 23 characters I added collision and an end state. The way I implemented collision is pretty suspect I'll admit because all I'm doing is checking if the obstacle is to the left of the player and at the same Y position. I could have checked if X equals 9, but that would mean the obstacle would have to be at the exact same position as the player. And although the gameplay isn't the focus, having the obstacle hit at any of those 8 frames or so stops the game from feeling too easy. This is the same reason the game is scaled to 128 by 72. This seems about the right size for the default font size to make reasonably sized visual representations, and it's small enough that moving everything by one pixel per frame doesn't feel too slow. So this is how the game looked in the end. It's very basic, but for just 100 characters I'm pretty happy with it, and it was definitely worth it if anyone watching learned any cool tricks. Just don't copy my lack of semicolons and horrendous elimination of any spaces which makes the code super unreadable. Everyone who's stuck around this far in the video, I really hope it's been enjoyable, and I would challenge everyone to try and make their own game in 100 characters. If you do make something, you can even share it in the comments or tweet it at me. But that's it for this tutorial, I hope it's been helpful. And if you want to see more kinds of these videos, please give the video a like, maybe subscribe, maybe hit the notification bell, and also leave a comment about the video, about my code, or with any ideas for future topics. That's all from me, see you in the next video.